morning, guys. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all over online. And that is also the name of my Facebook page. If you want to go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when a new video comes out. It's also the name of my website where you can get most of the supplies. And here's what we'll be working on for today. This is a decoupaged Easter basket that I made using some twine and a balloon. And I will show you everything we need to do in order to get this started. I took something called a helium quality latex balloon. You can get these on my website. You have to use the helium quality. And I stretched it out, I blew it up, and then I took some Mod Podge and poured it in a dish. And I had a little bit of water next to me for this project also. And here's the gardening twine that I used. So I used this twine that says four pound load limit. I put it into a ball and on my balloon I took a magic marker and I drew what looked like a basket. I wanted to work on the handle first, so I cut pieces of twine to measure a little bit longer than the handle. So it would go over the lines a little bit. And then I cut about 20, 18 to 20 pieces of these so that they would fit right there in that center. This will make sense as I go along. <laughs> this is matte Mod Podge in the bowl. And if you can see, I have two rubber bands right there. And I would dip the twine into the Mod Podge and then I would pull it through the rubber bands so that it would take most of the excess glue off. You can do this with your fingers too. I just found that my fingers were getting really sticky, which can't be avoided. If you're going to give yourself a manicure or get a manicure, you want to wait until after you're completely done with this project, which I learned the hard way. <laughs> so I put the strands onto the balloon and I noticed it kept slipping all over the place. So I needed to put it on something to secure it. Look at my fingers. So I took a cup and just placed the balloon on the cup. and. Then what I did was I just kept repeating this process. Dipping, dipping, I'm using my fingers here. Dipping the string, then putting it over the area where I wanted the basket handle to be. And I did this until that whole handle section was completed. You see, I did not stay in the lines, which is pretty typical for me. You should try to stay in the lines on this. And I'm taking more Mod Podge and I'm going to smooth it over this whole section. When I was done doing this, I put this aside for about 30 minutes just to let it set. Then I tipped the balloon upside down because now I wanted to work on the basket portion, which would be this bottom half. And at first I was going to measure several of these, but I realized that the balloon gets smaller as you go near the base, so there's no way to measure them. So I just decided to keep wrapping it around like this with the same method, dipping it in two long strands into the Mod Podge, then wrapping it around the balloon. So I'm dipping a bunch of the string here. I didn't pre-measure it. I just put a whole bunch in there and I'm getting it drenched with the Mod Podge here. Cut it. Now I even used a crochet hook. There's just no getting around this. It is one of the messiest things you'll ever do. It's like working with paper mache. <laughs> so whether you do it with your fingers, a crochet hook, a fork, it's still going to be messy. Uh, anyway, what I did was I started to follow my lines and wrap the twine 
around the balloon so it's soaked with the Mod Podge and this is why you need a thicker balloon. The lighter balloons won't work, they'll pop, they won't hold up to the drying process. So I just kept doing this until I went all the way around the whole balloon and got to the very base or since it's upside down it will be the top. Now since this is going to be the base of the basket, I put a lid from, I think this was from an olive jar, there at the base and I continued to wrap the string with the Mod Podge on it in the same way, but I wrapped that lid right in there so that we'd have a nice secure base. Now, even though this looks dry, I did have to set this aside overnight to let, to let it dry enough to make it firm so that when we take the balloon out, the whole thing doesn't collapse. So here we are the following day. Everything's dry. And what I'm going to do is pop the balloon, but I first, I wanna cut it up here and you see how it's starting to deflate and the basket's a little bit flimsy right now uh, this pulls away a lot easier than it looks like it is see it's just pulling away there so you want to pull the balloon away you can pull it out of the inside it comes out pretty easily something i discovered was that the mod podge transferred some of the magic marker onto the inside of the basket which was okay we're not going to worry about that anyway but it was just an interesting note i covered the whole surface i'm filing away some edges here but i covered this whole surface in mod podge one more time and i put it in my oven at 175. so here's the reason why i put this in the oven if you see the inside here you can see that there's a white pasty film and that's after this has been drying all through the night. One other tip though that you really have to do if you're going to put this in the oven, you will need to secure the basket so that it doesn't melt, which it will do. So I took some parchment paper and wrapped it around a bowl that fit just right inside the basket. And more importantly, which you'll see in the next step, I had to find some way to keep that top up there. So I just crumpled up some parchment paper, put it in the bot. These are all oven safe bowls, but the oven's only going to 175, so it's not a big deal. And I put this lid in the top here to keep that handle from collapsing or melting in the oven. The oven also hardens the Mod Podge. It bakes it to a nice hard texture. So this is dry. I took it out of the oven. I'm taking everything out and I'm gonna, going to let it sit and cool off a little bit and I'm just securing this handle again while it cools off. Now it's dry and the fun part begins. It's nice and firm and ready to work on and I'm going to first paint it with chalk paint because I want a nice base to go under my napkins. I spray painted the inside of this pink and I'm going to use the chalk paint on the outside. I kind of wish I just used the chalk paint over the whole thing. But make sure you use an acrylic brush. A sponge, a sponge brush will get destroyed in this process. So a bristle brush is best. And while my basket is drying, I'm taking a brush, wet paintbrush, and I'm going to tear away some of the images that I want.
and I made sure to separate the napkins only after I was done. I'm now going to go around the basket and decoupage. Now I did something a little different this time. I did not put decoupage glue on the basket. I laid the napkin down and I put the decoupage glue or the Mod Podge over the napkin. It helps the napkin to sink right into that weave and it won't tear it and it helps to eliminate those wrinkles that we get a lot of times especially when working with baskets. So for this particular project this is the way I'm going to decoupage this. You may want to keep a little dish of water handy so that you can dip the brush into the water and then back into the decoupage glue. Just make sure the brush isn't saturated. I'm done decoupaging this and once you're done you will want to make sure it's dry the whole basket is dry and then put another coat of decoupage glue on it and you can put this back in the oven but you don't have to you would need to follow those same steps or it will melt make sure there's something inside of it and again I put the basket in the oven set it to 175 when the oven reached 175 I turned it off and let it sit for half an hour inside the oven now I want to put a top coat on here the oven made the matte finish look a bit glossy so I took this matte varnish and I'm going to paint the whole outside I always recommend a varnish whether it's gloss or matte Mod Podge can get sticky if it gets damp or warm. So I'm just going to cover this whole surface inside and out and put it aside to dry. This takes about 15 to 20 minutes to dry and then I'll fill my basket. Here's how it looks without anything inside of it. And this was just using twine, Mod Podge, a balloon, and some pretty napkins and here we have our Easter goodies inside of here so once again guys thank you so much for all of your lovely comments thank you for subscribing don't forget about upcycle with decoupage on Facebook click like and follow and you'll be notified of new videos every week thanks again I'll see you next week with another video bye bye